All right, guys, so we're back. It's a whole nother day. Actually, several days. And we have both of the wings done now. So as you can see, we have the CA hinges allow for a pretty good amount of play, which is great on the flaps and the ailerons. I hate that the ailerons move more than the flaps, but they actually go down a little bit more. But I love the leading edge slats. That's so it's super cool. cool. So anyway, so that they are both done. And uh, we've got uh, similar play on all these surfaces and similar gaps, which is easier said than done. So I just wanted to mention that. I uh, did the second wing off camera as we discussed. And right now we're pretty much at the point where it's like, oh, you know what I didn't do though? Hmm. I forgot to glue the nuts on this side. So if you guys ever think of something like that, my experience with planes like this is that there's like four trillion steps. So just do it right away or you will never remember. You're right in your shadow. You need to probably, there you go. That's better. I don't know why I was shadowing there. Oh, it's because there's a light over that doorway. Yeah. So we're just gonna CA these. And you do want play on this. Whoops. You want this to be very easy to move. And um, this one might need to be tightened up a little bit. See, this stuff all gets secured. Um, I felt like we had forceps out. Where are the forceps? I think we were going to use them, and then you ended up getting something else. Do you want me to grab them? No. Okay. I guess I'll just do this, and then hopefully I don't drop it on the wing, cause massive damage, because that would be kind of annoying. I think I, I want them to be the same, but you'll see there's a pretty big gap there, and I feel like I could probably go ahead mm. and leave the gap about the same, because there's no jam nut on these. You do need to keep that in mind. So like if you don't glue these or use like a nylock or something like that, instead of the provided screw, you're gonna be in trouble. Where did our paper towels go? That's the other thing too that we've run into because we do this stuff in our kitchen is I'm, whenever we start a project that's this big, of course I always think it's gonna take 10 minutes <laughs> and then it takes like three days. And I mean, we knew it was gonna be dreadfully long, but this is gonna be a nice plane. And so we kind of have a, I don't know if I wanna call it like a compromise, but we don't typically spend this much time on planes just because we, we can't afford this time commitment. We've mentioned that a couple of times throughout this build, um, but it's, you know, that limits you and it will stop you from building um, some good planes if you really hold hard and fast to this plane. CA hinges in there. That's a weird spot. The cats were playing with them. Okay. Well, makes it hard for me to find them. This one didn't have as much CA, so I'm going to go just a little bit thicker on there. But all we're doing is just covering up the threads. You can still get that off of there, no problem. It'll be, it'll be totally fine. And um, just go ahead and Go heavy. You can Okay, so we've got all those done. If you do this with your bottle and it makes a noise, like it needs to blow its nose, then that means it's gonna make a mess of your of your tubes. So usually what I recommend is just get a little drip going and then flip it back over and then let that pull it out. You can squeeze the bottle sideways like that and it'll Sometimes clean it and sometimes not. So in this case, it didn't work, but good enough. The cup has worked really nice to keep those upright though. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that that's done, this is obviously setting up. It'll just take a few minutes because there's a kicker on there and then these will be ready to receive servos. Now, I'm torn between this step. We've got, the next step is to put control horns on all these different sur surfaces, but I feel like right now the safest bet is to just go ahead and CA the blocks and screw the blocks to the servos. But I also am torn between that and getting these pivots in here because these need to be, <coughs> these need to be 
put a little piece of tape on that so we didn't forget it was in there because that can actually push all the way into the wing, so be careful. Um, that's gonna make it kind of nasty to slide in, unfortunately. But this action here, that needs to be glued at some point and I honestly just can't, I can't decide because I'm sort of torn on whether or not I even wanna glue it. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm wondering if there's maybe a way to put a screw in there so that you can take that screw out and then like legitimately take the wing off of this plane. Um, or you could potentially slide it way out, but we have already determined that this, this position does not allow you to necessarily sweep it properly. Um, so still kind of up in the air on what direction I'm gonna go with that. Uh, these are blocks. There's some bigger blocks and shorter blocks. And then obviously we got tons of servos down here. So each and every one of these servos have already been uh, set up and labeled. We did that right at the beginning, you guys might remember. So for instance, this happens to be uh, the right wing here. So why don't we just, uh, we'll just grab each of these and carry them down. So we have a left flap and then the left aileron. So we need three of these and they're all labeled. We already have them positionally marked. Uh, to save confusion because really I got to be honest with you This would be a super confusing step if you hadn't have gone through the trouble we did early on in the project And there are certain steps like that that you just it's you know, not really a fun step, but you kind of got to do it Okay um, If you don't figure it out early on you're gonna have a hard time figuring it out halfway through But you know, you can figure it out whenever we still had to do it one way or another and okay, so right le leading edge flat and right aileron as well as right flat. Now this is the bag, the bags that have all the screws and stuff in them. So we do need to ultimately get those screws inserted at some point too. But the cool thing about this plane is it is fully accessible even after we're done building it. And then we also have to mount that black thing, which I don't know if it's like a speed sensor or what it's supposed to be. Uh, but it's definitely a thing okay so the first thing that we have to do on these blocks if you come around we'll show them on the manual um they're suggesting the extension lines okay so they show a pp you use your pp to mm -hmm. install the servos so what you want to do is just stick your pp um run a screw right into your pp <laughs> okay and um, then when we're done, we'll go ahead and use one of these easy connectors. That sounds super easy. Sure. Um, and then this is the other solution. Mm, stick firmly. Wowzers. Excuse me. So really, it looks like what we need to do is pretty straightforward stuff. We just need to get blocks installed so that the servos are mounted in such a way. And then once they're installed, and then we should be allowed to continue the process for the other wing. So I'm just going to put this kind of out of the way. We'll just put this here. If we have questions, it's really not that complicated. I just hope we don't have to cut the blocks because I hate cutting blocks. Uh, they never seem to be the right size. Okay, so get ready to be disappointed in me. Okay, great. Okay, so now this is on there where it needs to be. And it's not like it's unrecoverable if we would take that off. But I would like to really not have to do that if at all possible. Okay, so you can see kind of where it's supposed to be um, positionally, and we just have those centered. Okay, so this is the right flap, and there's no rhyme or reason. I just happened to grab this, so it happens to be the right one on the right, right machine here. Now, what I think I want to do is I think I want to, I'm sort of tempted to just glue this whole dang thing down. So I'm just going to lay this very carefully in the same orientation so that there's no question. And then I'm just going to go ahead and glue it. Okay, right down on the middle. You know, a couple glues of CA, nothing you can't undo real easy if you decided you wanted to work on this plane later. Uh, but then of course you've got it um, glued positionally where you believe it needs to be. And that's mostly for this checkpoint. And then when this uh, servo sweeps, we've already adjusted the control arm uh, to be where we think it needs to be as well. And I have to lay that kind of on the edge of the table or the counter in this case. So we grab a couple of these PPs. Uh, just grab your PP right out of the sack, which is strange. And I'm gonna just look at the PP on the drawing 
and uh, looks like the grain is supposed to go up. So you may have to chop your own peepees <laughs> if you want them to align properly. So I'm just looking at this and thinking, okay, well that might actually fit. So that makes me feel pretty good. Okay, so we can just go ahead and take this and you'll note that it's not quite square. So I'm just gonna find the side that happens to be square and then glue the PP down. You could also put it this way. The problem is if you put it this way, you're gonna be drilling into the grain. And I'm, I honestly am not sure. It's such a small block that I think you're pretty much screwed anyway you go. Ha <laughs> ha, pun intended. But you'll note that there's no rails on the side, which is great. That means you'll actually be able to just glue those down, okay? For those of you who've ever built these models um, in the ARF configuration, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about because a lot of times that's not the case and it makes it a lot harder. I mean, if your PP is harder, I mean, sometimes it well, just made depends. It easier. Well, it depends on what you're trying to do with your PP. So if you look at this, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this right here. A couple of drips. If you're this deep into the video, and uh, you are discouraged by my PP remarks, I just wanna remind you that you are watching Brian Phillips RC. If you'd like to support us, send us uh, gifts through PayPal, Patreon, and also the best and most equitable way would be to just buy these beautiful planes. If you don't like this particular plane, there's tons of them in the links in the video description below if you haven't ever been to the website. We have a new website, it's called Brian Phillips RC, really hard to remember. Uh, it's unconventional name and doesn't even match up with my YouTube channel, except that it's exactly the same <laughs> word. Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Phillips, P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S, just like Phillips 66 minus the royalties, dot com. W That's a really long. W -W 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 yes. Dot BrianPhillipsRC.com. And then you can see what all those links would be if we could fit them in the video description, which we can't because we just have a humongous list. Yep. It's huge. And the website is still under construction. It's always under construction. It's always under construction. So we're just gonna have like one of those under construction sets, just like the roads during spring and summer in uh, northern climates, they're pretty much always under construction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like even during the winter, they're pretty much also just under in case. construction, but then they have a little bit more construction uh, during the uh, off season of mother nature. So you see this, okay, pretty mm -hmm. simple stuff. Now, if you're inclined like me to feel like these are not gonna hold, you can just do a little extra glue all over the place in every possible orifice. You just stick it right in there and then help your PP work, okay? So we're gonna glue that right like that. And then there's this little label that says RF that we made. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna take RF after a second, I may actually just go ahead and, you know, just for grins, just go ahead and plop a couple of drips, drips on there. It's like, oh, how dare you glue that in? It's not serviceable anymore. Well, you know, to be honest, I was thinking about hot gluing these on anyway, because, you know, I'm just, I'm just not sure that it's really as relevant as, as people might want it to be. Now, there's a crap load of screws right here. I have to assume that that's the only screws that would possibly work mm -hmm. for this, unless, unless they come in each of these bags. And what do you know? There actually are screws in there. The mounting screws are right there. Pretty cool. So let's see how they work or don't work. Sometimes these screws like don't work. Let's see what's in the bag. What's behind door would number they one? not work? Uh, why would they not work? Yeah. Because they're too wide or too I'm strong or too long or whatever mm. i don't think there's a big problem with that in china <laughs> too long it's not what? usually not usually the problem um no i was uh i was talking about the screws being the right size but you've taken it to another level right as usual which by the way that is a pretty good screw hey, looks like see? it bit nicely and you uh, thought it wasn't going to work. Then it says RF, as in right flat. I'm torn. I'm thinking that what I kind of want to do is I kind of want to take this and I kind of want to leave that there. 
You have your other sticky note though. Well, I understand. But what I was gonna say is I don't think that'll peel off very good. So what I was gonna do is I'm gonna just cut this. Might make it a little harder to peel that off. But then I can take this and go know. RF. Yeah, that was good thinking. Mm -hmm. Just like that. And then I can take this and I can cut it and just discard the extreme amounts of excess because that will get a little bit thick trying to pass through the wing. Okay, which is the next thought process is we do ultimately at some point we're going to have to make a decision. Now, I always keep these because you never know when they will need to be sold uh, to put food on the table, you mm -hmm. know, because these could be worth millions. Like three beans. Millions, millions of millions of something else <laughs> at some point. But we will, we will plan on having that as a backup plan. Okay. You know. Okay, so I'm just going to take the drill and just... Uh, bite a little teeny bit i mean i'm not even i'm not even pre-drilling the whole entire hole i'm just starting it okay just giving it a starter point i'm gonna take the screw stick it in the hole and just uh go to town okay so that's in there i don't know so far that's been a pretty freaking smooth process now for those of you at home that don't know much about brian phillips rc Basically, uh, Megan and I have been married for a million years. Feels like a lifetime. <laughs> Thanks. And, and uh, I mean, because it, it is actually kind of almost the majority of our lifetime. And Megan is my wife, and she helps me to film. And she has a hilarious nickname of the camera crew, which gets uh, routinely misunderstood as though it's some sort of a jab or like a disrespect. Um, which, which it's not. It's not. We've explained this um, in the video, in this in very this video, video, because we have forgotten what we've talked about because it's so long. <laughs> it's so long. Like, we're actually not even sure if it's the same channel. But um, <laughs> at this point, it's been such a long video that we have um, kind of moved on from the hobby and we have come back to the hobby in that time. I mean, it was, it was a short exit, but I came back. And that's all you need to know. <laughs> Right? I mean, right. Okay. I think. So remember, this is the right flap, but also I want to just mention something. We are starting with the closest one, which means we're going to block access to that hole. Mm -hmm. So probably not the wisest decision that we've ever made. But if you would grab me those extension cords, there's two of them. Okay. So I'm going to show you the trick of the day, guys. Trick of the day. So if you're watching this in one sitting, you're probably in jail right now. Mm -hmm. So. Whatever you did, or whatever you were falsely accused of. Don't, don't do that again. Don't do that again. But in the meantime, while you're thinking about what you're not gonna do again, because this video is gonna be like 12 hours long. I don't even think they would let a prisoner watch an entire Brian Phillips RC. It's probably They don't have in like a bylaws. TV in their room, They're do like, they? Okay, listen, no illicit drugs that we know about and if you watch a Brian Phillips RC video, you have to take breaks because other people will want to watch the video. What if they get one show a day? And so people are yeah, like, I'm like, just going to watch a Brian Phillips a Brian RC. RC because then, it's like 12 you know, hours long. It's, it's like hanging out with my best buddy. And, uh, you know, it's like, Brian, I want to meet you when I'm out. <laughs> if you're in prison, leave it in the comments below. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually curious. We've kind of got this running joke. And I don't know, maybe it's not a joke after all. Um, some more crazy things have happened in our life, I'm sure, but, uh, anyway, yeah, this is going to suck to feed this through. Um, so, gonna... but you don't have, you wouldn't have to put that one in, right? Like we could just mount all the rest of the servos and then start well, with the aileron and smart, work our way back. What would be smart is if, uh, the camera crew would grab my forceps. I can actually start with the, the right aileron. Yeah. And then what would happen is I would just basically take this smaller servo end instead of the larger end that I was trying to feed through. And what I'm gonna do is I'm basically going to attempt to feed this one through. And you know, I found that there's a million ways to skin this particular cat. And there's just like not really a great one. We could try a bamboo skewer. Sometimes that works, but you know, bamboo skewers sometimes tend to poke the finish. And so I, I Really try to be careful with this. A bent tip is usually the one you want. And I'm still, I'm struggling to get it through because they've got a long reach here. Make sure you grab it through the same hole, which is usually the holes located at the biggest part of the wing. So, you know, that's another trick. You can follow that. 
And uh, sometimes we'll grab a flashlight to help with this process. You can also use another trick, trick of the day, is you can use your wing joiner. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and try to use the wing joiner. So the wing joiner is gonna go up in that business, just like that. If you guys like the content you see here on Brian Phillips RC, please do give us a thumbs up. The thumbs up help us to offset the horrible algorithm that punishes people that actually do content that you want that's really, really long and get you away from those terrible, tedious, boring days in the pokey. So if you want to help support an algorithm that's more just, I mean, unless you were justly put in prison, you know, because you actually did whatever they said that you did. And you, I mean, maybe you even admitted it in like a signed written uh, confession. Or maybe the cops talked you into making a confession. They tricked you into it. I hear a lot about these things on true crime episodes that my wife doesn't like to hear about. Mm-hmm. That's true. Chicken. She does make a mean chicken, too. <laughs> um, ooh, wow. Ooh, that was good. Ooh, it slipped right through. Wowzer. Woo! Wow. Boy, that was a little easier than I thought it was going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed this through and you're like, well, but Brian, you got two extension cords. How many extension cords do you need? Well, I need two. And the reason I'm doing two is because once I get two through, then I can just tape the other ones on and just kind of feed it back through. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I will, uh, you know, obviously you don't want to pull real hard because it's being that these are joined together by a connector, you're going to at some point need to stop it from coming through. Okay, so that's stopped from coming through now. Cool. So now, uh, where was I? We were talking about prisoners and different... Being married for an eternity, which that's... was kind of an odd transition. Well, like it was trying to say something. Natural <laughs> transition. Um, so I'm going to put this right here. We're going to go to the right aileron, which you can tell the ailerons by my label. So yours will not have this label because I didn't do it. Right. And if yours are screwed up, remember, I also didn't do it. So if your plane is like, and you followed along exactly as I did in the video, then you know, you've got a video. You might want to watch it two or three more times. See if you actually did follow exactly. Because I I've heard it a couple of times. And sometimes we find out later that. You know, they skipped a few steps. You weren't as exact you, as you when, thought. But just listen. When when you're trying to build these things and, and they don't let you have these in prison, you have to make your own <laughs> out of uh, spoons. You know, spoons and forks or sporks. If you're in a really classy joint, then uh, it gets, gets harder. All right, let's look at this. See how that's centered, guys? Are that's we showing them all of these? Well, ah, that is kind of a good point. Are you saying this is going to be boring? How many stories do you have? About prisoners? <laughs> Lots. Lots of stories. I mean, this is probably topic number two that I talk about in videos, I thought. Prison? Prison? Prisoners watching our videos? Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously. Well. There's, there's other topics. We, we do discuss the different hardware, and it comes in nut sacks. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know... Screwing. How you use them. Yes. These different ways mm -hmm. to uh, attach them to the plane. For those of you that aren't familiar with Brian Phillips RC, we, we talk about all sorts of different things here that might interest our mostly male audience. <laughs> Gro grown up children <coughs> audience <laughs> like me. Yes. And if you're, if you're not a grown up child, then why are you playing with huge, expensive toys? Right. Okay, all right? Just admit it. Admit it and you will be happier. And then you can just embrace it. You can embrace it and you can be like, yeah, that's me, pretty much. So anyway, the topics that we discuss on this channel are not made for children. They're made for grown-up adult men. Who play with toys. Who play with toys, like me. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't really care what anybody says. And if they think, there's a problem with that. There's a problem with them. 
Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> and that's why there's never arguments at all, ever. Ever. At RC Flying Fields. It's just like a bastion of hope and <laughs> kindness. There's um, never, never disagreements. It's just like marriage. <laughs> Everything goes smooth until you die. <laughs> And it's like, um, yeah, so it's it's just, that's the way it goes, right? Yeah. Did, did I get that mm -hmm. right? 100%. Better than my last marriage analogy that had to do with being in prison. <laughs> like, I think you're going to say better sense. than your last marriage. Listen. <laughs> what was that? No, I mean, there wasn't another one. No. There was never another marriage. It's always We've been, been married you. since we were kids. It's always been you. Almost. Right? I did not marry a kid. No, we were, you were a kid we were too. We both of age. <laughs> Barely. I mean, geez, you're going to get me in trouble. We have legal documentation. Listen, not even that is okay yet. <laughs> but they're working on it. So anyway, on that high note, speaking of prison. <laughs> so look at this, guys. Look at that. That is amazing. Do you see how easy that was? I just, I literally did that in... What would you say? At least 26 that was less minutes than, and 17 seconds. Listen, I wasn't talking about both of them. I was talking about just this. That one, one didn't take you very long. You got to screw it in though. Okay. If you say so. And remember that dust, that dust that sprays all around the sticky hole will just help to strengthen it. Hmm. So it's. Do you need it? You need a new yep, sack. I need a new sack. Because you haven't put the screw in the control no, board No, I haven't. And, and these are well designed, actually. I'm happy with this. And, and you guys know that. I, I'm always trying to look out for the details that would annoy me as, um, you know, I try to put myself in your shoes. If I was stuck having to whittle my own knife, <laughs> how, how would I feel? Um, if, the, if the nutsack didn't have enough nuts. Because be some of you don't have access to Dremel tools and other things. You have only the tools that you have whittled out of your chess pieces that you traded with. What's the guy's name from? Uh, what's the guy's name from a green mile? Do you know? I don't like that movie. It's too scary. It's That's scary. right. Things happen. It's sad. Like things happen. Yeah. Well, okay. So what about Shawshank Redemption? What's, <laughs> what's so much better? Well, I mean, what's what's his name? The guy that gets things. You know the guy that gets okay. Morgan Freeman. It's Morgan Freeman. I get things. <laughs> I went to the tree. That was a pretty bad Morgan Freeman. That was need, actually really terrible. I need to work on my Morgan Freeman. Mm -hmm. nope. But yeah, Morgan Freeman, uh, he gets things. And one of the things he gets, I mean, he could probably get an X-Acto knife. I mean, if he can get cigarettes. I mean, where do they get all these cigarettes from in prison anyway? I don't it's, know. Isn't it like smoke, like illegal to smoke inside or whatever? Probably, no, no probably should be. No less the illicit drugs. You know, we were talking about Will Smith the other day, and I just feel like we didn't we didn't cover that topic properly. <laughs> we need to go we, back to that. We, we may need to revisit <laughs> full that. circle. Yeah, full circle, circle, circling back. Okay, so this is the uh, right aileron, not mm -hmm. to be confused with a right beer ale. Now I know where our kids get their spelling abilities. Listen, <laughs> I never claimed to know how to spell those things that look like hieroglyphics. Right represent sounds that come out of your mouth. I'm aware. No, I, spelling was not my strong suit. Nope. Yesterday. Yep. Or in school. It's one of the few classes that I actually got a bad grade on, and a legitimately bad grade, ever. Usually I did okay in, in school and things that I learned about, because I like learning things. That's how you stay out of prison. Unless you're in prison, and then, you know. Might as well learn something while you're there. Might as well learn this. I mean, you could get out of there, and you could go to Shenzhen, China, and make airplanes for a living. I mean, honestly, maybe if you break out of prison, you could just go straight to Shenzhen, China, <laughs> and they'd be like, hey, open arms. You can teach us to speak English. There you go. Why do we always assume we're speaking to an English-speaking audience? Mm -hmm. We, well, we I have mean, so many foreign people that make comments on our videos like yeah. from Russia. Russia. From Russia. Also from all over. All over. We have a lot. Yeah. Asians. We have people from Korea. Mm -hmm. And I try to reply 
in their native tongue translated from Google. So it's probably like making some really insulting statement about their mother. So and we I, apologize. To which I can only say it's Google's fault. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's it's cool that we have people that watch our videos. I'm like, geez. Yeah. You must be in, in prison in Korea. China. It's like, no, no, because it's still a long video. I don't even know if American sentences, they've, they've updated sentencing guidelines, so we're gonna have to shorten our videos. It's true. They're, they're trying to be like my Your prison sentence is three Brian Phillips videos long. Yeah, it's, it's like when the judge starts throwing out, yeah, um, are you familiar with the uh, Brian Phillips scale? Oh, yeah. okay, well, you'll have plenty of time to familiar, familiarize yourself. You have to watch three Dancing Wings hobbies videos. <laughs> now, we did time lapse the first one, so I would recommend watching that one repeatedly. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Look at that. I'm out with both extension cords now. Oh, nice. Yeah. But I mean, that's not going to be enough to reach the receiver. Right. So we'll have to make some decisions. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to this for a minute. Hey, hey, what? stop screwing with that shank. Get over here and pay attention. <laughs> um, right aileron, right aileron. See the arrows? Have yep. Oh, you have lots of people left to insult. Ooh. We have like hours. It's way So early. this is still here and I'm gonna, you know, to be honest, it's, it's a little bit tempting to just like make a key mark on these that would represent a unique qualification for this position. Like one mark, one mark, one mark. Cause there's six of them. So I would have to then on a few of these, I'd have to do like two hashes or something like mm. that. Um, but then it would be, you'd be guaranteed to get it in the opening the same direction. Do you want to label the end of that servo wire too? Like you did with your extra tape from the oh, yes. right flap? You mean with that? Yeah. By the camera there, she is not just gorgeous. She's also very intelligent. Except econ. I got a bad grade in econ. You did? In college. Well, you're lucky you're with me. Well, I didn't really go. You didn't show up. It was a long ways away. I'm, I'm so glad that you used your family's resources to skip that class. I went to all the other ones. Yeah, congratulations. And then I married you. And then it was totally unnecessary. And then I didn't need it anymore. So you made a good call. Mm -hmm. Good job. See, I had it all planned out. I hey, need, this right I need ale, to go. the right ale, not to be confused with beer. We probably, you know, this video is not made for kids. We don't right. talk about beer because kids don't know what beer is. No. You can't speak of said adult beverages in front of children. They might become alcoholics. Not made for kids. It's not. It's not made for kids. Just adult children that love things like this. Okay, so, by the way, for those of you that have never made, you know, 20 or 30,000 hours of footage, <laughs> no, I thought you were going to say. For the, what? what? I can't, no. Okay. Uh, for those of you who haven't done that, mm -hmm. there is a point in the video when you run out of stuff to talk about. Yep. For normal people. And they haven't met you. That's right. It never runs out. No. It does not. Not even when you're sleeping sometimes. Yeah. My brother used to have a room on the other side of the wall for me. We had rooms at back to back in the house that my parents had a tornado hit when they were, we weren't living there at the time. But anyway, um, there was an air vent. It was like a cool air return. So anybody who knows anything about construction knows that cool air returns are usually the same, you know, channel and a wall. And so that's like a good place to eavesdrop on your kids if you're you know, concerned about their new boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, you know, or just like, tablets and stuff, whatever people do now. I mean, our kids are not quite old enough to have that problem yet, thank God. But so, anyway, so my brother would sleep talk and it would freak me out like bad. I hated that, it was so weird because there'd be some random babblings going on next door and it's like, who are you talking to, moron? You know, but you're saying I do that? You do that. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. But usually I just wake up like, who's there? Yep. Hey. And then I go back to sleep. Yep. <laughs> Rudely. I don't do that on purpose. I do that subconsciously. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I you don't get, even wake up. I still get blamed. For I it. do. I get blamed for it. Mm -hmm. It was weird. The other, the other night I had one of those where I thought somebody was in the doorway. And I was like, well, I'm just going to go back to sleep. <laughs> Thanks. <I'm tired." laughs> it's like, 
Yeah, I mean, take what you need. <laughs> There's a lot of airplanes down there. Great. Hey, welcome to Brian Phelps RC. <laughs> you may be familiar with the environment since now you're in prison <laughs> watching the video. <laughs> Hope your injuries were quick to heal. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you need some help? Arliss. <laughs> Ar Arliss. Okay, I'm going to glue this one. This is a right leading edge slab. Am I supposed to be paying attention to what so, you're doing? So listen, for those of you that aren't familiar with the channel, part of the reason why I keep going over the same things is because <laughs> I understand that some of you are going to watch these videos in different little sub -sacks. You know, you're like, um, you know, I started this video uh, during the disorderly conduct and then, you know, they put, they put me into solitary. So I, you know, I had to take a break. And also some of you might just not be in prison and you're like, hey, I'm gonna watch this part where he talks about how to do the wing because the wing on that plane is complicated. And I'm new to the hobby. So that's that's another big sect of our audience. I mean, there's a, probably, a, I would say that it's probably fair to assume that we are prison sentence people are probably a minority. What, I mean, do you think? I or? would, I mean, I would think so. I hope. I it seems hope a that, little strange, but. That, I mean, I, like, we don't judge. We literally are not judges. Nope. Um, but the thing is, uh, a lot of kids um, that are uh, adults watch this, and they they need some help, maybe getting back into the hobby. And so, if you're if you're new to the hobby and you've got questions, I, I gotta admit, it's a lot harder to keep up than it used to be because we we have a lot of people that follow the channel, and that's really cool and flattering and everything. But it doesn't make more time for us. Nope. And so I struggled to keep up and I felt bad. Somebody asked me a really good question today and I was like seven days late getting mm. back to them. So I felt super bad about that. But if you're that guy or girl or um, what, whatever you go by these days, um, I, not, not, that, not that you're that thing, um, I want to apologize in advance. It does happen where you guys will leave a comment. I am running into the outlet of my wire with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and just take the edge off here. I'll just show you a trick here. You can just literally take this edge and just push down. Oh, just, I know it's kind of slip a little faster, but don't even need a cutting board if you just uh, chop your finger off and just stop the damaging the counter. the counter. Yeah. But anyway, I wanted to show you how I was gonna do that because um, this now can go like that. See, and that goes in there square and tight. Because if you have a gap like this, it will break the wood when you try to tighten it. Or it won't actually securely hold. It has, that's been my experience at least. And also please note that I'm not gluing these things down like a lot. I'm just gluing them down a little bit, like two to three drips. Because what's going to happen is, more than likely, I'm just going to do... Um... Oh shoot, where did the... There, there's the kicker. Oh. I'm going to end up doing... Uh... The screws and the screws will hold. But you gotta remember, there's a lot of surface area on the servo and there's very little surface area on these things. So if they break off when you replace the servo, <laughs> big deal, just reglue it. Um, okay, so for those of you that are coming back to the hobby, been out of the hobby for a long time, you probably remember a lot of the aspects of doing this when you were a kid um, or when you were younger. Maybe you were an adult when you were doing building planes. I remember my my dad had a, a an eaglet, which is, or yeah, it was an eaglet. It was a, I think it was a SIG eaglet. Probably. And I remember watching him crash that because he had bumped the Futaba power switch. And so he proceeded to rebuild the plane and he built a block that was, you know, pretty much this size and he stuck it in there so you couldn't accidentally turn it off. This was the thing that used to happen. So that's why your radios don't turn off right away. They have like a delay to turning off, um, which is annoying until you realize that's the reason. And most of you guys are you know, intelligent enough to figure that out without me telling you, which is the other hard thing about this channel. We have to share things that under the wrong circumstances, people could think that, you know, like being insulting. We don't know who you are unless you tell us. And that's what we filmed. So we, we didn't know who you were when we were accidentally insulting you. So please accept my wife's <laughs> sincere apologies for whatever she said. <laughs> right. It's exactly always me. Is. Yes. That's mm -hmm. me. Always, always my fault. Always, always my wife. <laughs> so, what else happened? 
last few in days. prison no i wasn't oh, we're done with prison oh okay seriously what are you obsessed with prison i um learned how to do laundry in our bathtub why did that because our three-year-old washing machine broke that's so weird it's almost like I not remember. even three years old it's almost like i remember our engine blowing up just a few weeks ago mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah that was nine thousand right. dollars yeah um yeah so that sucked mm -hmm. and then what else what else fun happened that day oh there was i did feel like i broke my ankle but i didn't mm -hmm. but you didn't it just felt like i broke my ankle mm -hmm. i didn't actually pilot hole these just to see if they would go in oh yeah i'm hoping it doesn't break the the wood i almost felt like the pilot hole did make it a little easier to start but i feel like it's probably going to weaken the bite but I'm gonna still do that just so I got a little bit. See, it's just a, a real small. If you look at the shaft size of this drill bit compared to the, you wouldn't want to pilot hole the whole thing because you would just basically compromise. Mm. You wouldn't have enough material in there. Yeah. Um, and you'll note that I'm not putting any CA on the screws in this environment because these blocks are not necessarily balsa wood. They're pretty firm. They're probably like a basswood. See, listen. They're, they're light, but they're not balsa. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's good. I mean, they're giving us good quality materials. And we've been really impressed. Have, did I glue these like that on the other one? You did. Okay, so I'm just gonna do it the same. And you'll know when I do that, I'm not like, you know, putting a ton on there. It's just enough to kind of keep it secure. And um, you remember, you wanna be able to take this off without too much trouble. Cause you may need to get that off of there. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue down here just a little bit and down here just a little bit. I did that on the other one too, right? Yes, I think right. so. And I'm gonna be cursing a lot when I have to break these things out. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that's just like not tonight. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, me too, me too. See this? I take that servo wire and just kind of squish it down a little bit. Seriously, I'm just so proud of these guys for not putting a rail here because that happens a lot on these planes. And the where rail. Where they have a rail in it, and it always gives no oh. for that to go. Okay, so the right leading edge slat. So now this one should be pretty easy to get through. So I'm just going to pass it through by hand. Are you going in a different hole or are you putting them all in the same hole? Well, I mean, there's, uh, there's a joint. Not usually. Okay. I'm gonna go in the same hole then. Okay. And I'm gonna slide it through like this. And then I'm just gonna drop that right in there. Okay, cool. So that's ready to rock and roll. And then obviously we have quite a little bit extra. Okay. So as you can see, at some point we're gonna be putting this extension cable onto the one that's shorter, okay? The other thing is we need to get this right leading edge slats to uh, right here, and, and you're like, Brian, why are you putting that on before you pass it through? Mostly because I just have this insane fear of forgetting to do things, and I worry about stuff until it's done, and that drives my uh, entire family and everybody around me crazy, uh, but then things get done. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword, and most people would see both the positive and negatives of that. But then most of the people that are around me and care about me just see that it's really annoying. <laughs> you know, so they're, they're insensitive. Right. Isn't that, is that pretty much accurate? Yes. Okay. So what I was gonna do is when I get ready to do the uh, right flap, which this one's done too, you can see that actually went pretty dang smooth. Like that was easy. I didn't expect it to be easy. I expected it to be way bigger pain in the butt than that. It's not done. You're saying I gotta stick both of these through the same hole at the same time? Yes, I am saying that. Now, I, I mean, I guess I could go through a different hole, but there's only one exit strategy on this one. You oh. Come here and you can kind of show the people what I'm talking about. See, there's really that one spot where those are gonna come through, but there's a cavity that only lines up with that middle hole. Right. Okay, so you see? So it does kind of only yeah, need to go through the same hole. It's gotta go through the same hole. Even if you wanted to get creative and try something new, just even just once. Probably shouldn't. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's not gonna end well. When you try to stick it through the hole and there's nowhere to go. Correct? Correct. Okay. 
So I'm gonna just feed this one back through. I'll turn that out of the way. And then we'll just go ahead and use this again because that worked pretty good actually. Even though there's already, um, um, there's already a wire through there, it should be no problem. Mm -hmm. It might make better sense to just kind of leave it in this cavity and then you can tape them all three together. Okay. So guys, we uh, did a video the other day and just released it today. So, I mean, we it's really hard to explain the rationale behind all of our decisions for release dates. Um, and we don't really mean to be cryptic about it, but it is, there's lots of things that go into how we pick our release dates. Not the least of which is we want the videos to perform as well as they can. And we want to keep you guys happy. Um, all at the same time, preferably. And we also want to work with, you know, the people that send us these planes for review so that we can bring you the best footage and also keep everybody happy. Um, you know, cause we work with these uh, different companies, but if it, if it weren't already blatantly obvious from watching the video like this, I mean, we really ultimately work for you all. Uh, we care what you think, you know, within reason more than what we care what these companies think, because really, I mean, I suppose they send us a couple of planes a year to, to do like, I mean, okay, great. You know, like that, that was nice, but we've got like, you know, 73 more that we'll do this year. So at the end of the day, even though we really appreciate working with different vendors, like we kind of answer to you before we answer them. Um, but we do at some level kind of answer these people. So we try to be, you know, as forthright about that. I mean, we do want to have relationships that are good and solid with these different companies because then we, you know, might get, get access to them a little bit earlier than the other guy or whatever. Oh, look, there it is. Hi, welcome to the club. It slipped. So if you weren't already aware, that's kind of the way the deal works usually with our, our vendors is uh, they send the planes out, we review them, and then the way we earn money uh, to help kind of more or less fund our channel and this whole experience that we're going through is by uh, getting small commissions from different brands that we work with or distributors. And in this case, this is a distributor. So we have links to BitGo Hobby. We've been working with them for a few years and they've actually been amazing to work with. And we had a lot of bad things to say about Dino. Mm -hmm. And they didn't get rid of us because nope. they were like, I kind of tend to agree yeah. a lot. So that is awesome when you can work with a company that's got that much character and um, cares about their customers enough to be able to let us be totally forthright with you. And that's cool. So we've really got a strong appreciation for Bitco Hobby in that regard. And um, these Dancing Wing Hobbies planes, as much of a pain in the butt it is to build these planes, they are absolutely gorgeous planes and they're very good. So when we, you know, gripe about how hard it is to build, you have to kind of keep that in perspective that these are very high quality planes and you can make them even higher quality planes if you want them to be that way. Which is pretty cool. Um, okay, so let's, I think the next move is to probably go ahead and throw screws in there because I'm sick of. Right, so know, that they're just, making. makes sense. Yeah, I, I have to assume this is the right. Yes, I saw that somewhere. Oh, you did? Yeah. In the instructions? Okay. Hey, I've got another PP in my hand. Yep. Would you grab my PP? Sure, I will take that. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. So anyway, I was, I was going to make a point there and I don't know if I actually completed the point. My point being is that we like working with companies that allow us to be um, totally forthright and, and more specifically, more accurately, we don't work with companies that refuse us the ability to be truthful with you. So I'm concerned about hitting those wires. Are you? Oh, just... I wasn't until you said that. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we don't have problems. They're I gonna, suppose like, they're kind of long. Push out of the way, right? Yeah, the wires the should wire push out of the way. It's not like they're braced there, like they're just going to sit there and, and take it. Okay, so now they did say to use four on these, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, yeah, uh, when you guys see the links in the video description below, um, you don't pay any extra. We just get like a, we just, we're just kind of like, we're just like bottom feeders. We just, um, 
we just steal hopes and dreams from these, you know, some of the prophets. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, like, instead of their kids eating some food, where our kids eat some food. And when I say kids, I mean me, and it's pizza. Yes. Because that's healthy. It's like a vegetable. And um, actually, there's fruit. There's tomato a fruit. Tomatoes a fruit. There's fruits and vegetables on a pizza, if you order right. So it's really health food. Which it's a salad, actually. You don't. It's, it's a salad. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if you didn't know how that worked, and yes, um, you know, we are honored to be in a position where we can do that and bring all these cool videos uh, to you all at home. It's uh, way more work than it looks like it is. And most of you guys that are watching this type of video kind of understand that. Um, you probably even have one of your own YouTube channels and you realize just how hard it is to get traction. And so you may have a special appreciation for that or you may think that I'm a blowhard, a hole that makes fun of prisoners. And uh, if that's the case, I apologize in advance that you feel that way, but you're wrong. And uh, we do love doing this. And so we're very glad that we have the opportunity to do it, especially the really exceptionally long builds. My camera crew just loves it. It's what she lives for. I do. Yeah. Right? It's my favorite. It's supposed to be truthful. Oh. Yeah. Actually, she kind of hates it because it is a lot of time. I used to wear headgear, and I, we mentioned that earlier in the video, but uh, it, it was basically a helmet that would hold the camera in front of my face so I could make sure things stayed in focus. That was hard. Mm -hmm. Like, literally hard on my neck. This video has been, like, pretty easy to put together. It's just long. It hasn't been terrible. Yeah, it hasn't been terrible. It's just, it sounds really dumb and first world problem -y, but it's like that. physically, I mean, it's like a demanding thing. Cause I... It's harder to film than it looks. Yeah. I'm kind of blocking your video too, folks. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, we, we do genuinely enjoy this, but I enjoy flying more than building yeah. at this stage of life. There are definitely aspects of this, especially when it like comes together. It's really cool. It's rewarding. And the issue that we have is just the, the sheer volume of time it takes on a plane like this, um, is is really where the issue is it's not uh, like i actually don't mind building the planes that have like two screws right i can <laughs> how many have two screws not i many. can see where there would be a point in our lives where you would choose to do this more mm -hmm. kind of like for fun oh yeah just build it yeah, yeah for fun De yeah definitely De definitely you like to do i mean like you're good at small tedious repetitive tasks you are you're a perfectionist so like you make stuff look nice so it'll be good these people have seen videos i know you don't have to lie <laughs> but no okay so that's that's totally sweet those look amazing i hope that they stick out far enough they don't look like they stick out very far mm, i hope we'll, so we'll, we'll honestly see like pretty quick here so, I mean, that's that. Now, we have to get the carbon fiber things stuck in there. And I don't know where the camera can move them to. She was cleaning up the other day because she had a friend over. And they needed to, like, eat food in our kitchen or whatever. Yeah, you know, I know. It whatever was... Whatever stupid thing they were doing that day. You know, like, when the friends came over. And so, I was like, well, just as long as you don't move the airplane... <laughs> Because I love having an airplane on my island for multiple days at a time. Yeah. So those of you that are watching this video too, um, if you haven't seen, we have playlists for pretty much every plane that we've ever done. Airplane, helicopter, uh, some projects like we've built, you know, different various projects uh, when we bought this property and we... We're building the house. We did a build series on that, which is kind of a, you know, basically just going through and talking about, you know, like, hey, we put this here and that there. And that was more of an off topic moment because we had like literally our life was consumed for such a long period. Mm -hmm. It was really hard for us to keep content coming. And so we didn't want people to think we had like died. 
So we spent a little bit of time um, keeping up with that. And then we've done a couple of different projects um, relevant to kind of our lifestyle more than just, just aircraft stuff um, here on the property because, you know, I mean, really, we love the way that things are set up here and it's expensive and taking a lifetime literally a lifetime to get where we are almost a lifetime i mean well, technically because it's two of us and we're like you know mid-life mid-professional <laughs> life um you know some of you guys have genuine curiosity about how we achieved some of the things that we've achieved and some of the things that we um have struggled with we we try to be as transparent as we can be without being completely inappropriate and uh, we like sharing stuff like that, but it's it's kind of that, that's a tough one because a lot of people watch these videos, and you just you just assume a lot of people are gonna they're gonna think you're trying to chill off or whatever. And that's really not our heart, but you're gonna have people that believe that no matter what. And it's pretty hard to change their minds. Like I just usually just don't try to change their mind. Yeah, because uh, it's a waste of my time. So. Um, look at this. Look at this. That needs to be glued, okay? And that's got a lot of play because they show it in the drawing. Did I? Oh, was this? This is the one we were looking at. Well, and we need to. When do the control rods go in? Yeah, no, I, I agree because we had that problem earlier. Yeah. So we need the easy connectors. We need three of those and we need three of the rods. And then a Phillips screwdriver, which I already have access to. So let's do that quick. So anyway, getting back to the point, story time with Brian Phillips and explanation time. You know, we have these long videos. It gives me a lot of time to talk about different things that are in our brains. And I, you know, don't claim to know what's in my wife's brain all the time, but we do share a lot of the same concerns. Uh, these are going to be used later, so I'm going to just put them next to that. Next to that. Because then okay. I'll probably build the other wing off camera like what we did because, you know, you don't want to waste your guys. Right. Time. Yeah, it's only like a nine hour video. <laughs> we don't want to waste so your far. time. So far. <laughs> well, no, I think it's like seven and then half at this point. So it's short. I've got lots of stories left. Okay, so anyway, I'm just going to show you we're on the, those K1s, K1, K2. I don't know what hole to stick them in. i got to look and see if this drawing is, oh, it's on there. Um, Let's see where it is. Because I want to make sure I get this right. Um, okay. So anyway, yeah, uh, the playlists are helpful for you to kind of figure out, you know, some of those answers to your questions. Because I always feel really bad. Rudder? Oh, look, that's super not ambiguous. Oh, it's in the outside hole. Uh, more control. More, less. Okay. Okay. Oh, helpful. That's helpful. I want these to actually move because it's a lot of work to make flaps. And I don't want it to be like, eh. Right. You know, I want it to actually move. So, to be honest, it's it's going to be kind of hard to test. And I can always back off. It's not like this is a fast acting thing, right? So this is going to go through here, okay? And then this screw is going to bite uh, the, the the shaft that goes through. Okay. Then this nut and two flat washers are going to be on other side and then we're going to drop that and that and then we're going to see if this fits and it does not Ooh, i did not want to drop that don't you dare thank you okay so that just fell off so now we're going to have to drill a hole oh, son of a biscuit lover mm -hmm. but we already know that's in the neutral position because it's going to go like this so i can move it by hand and i want to see if my drill bit is about the right size which by golly it is pretty much cool Still the same size we put in like 17 hours ago. So just refer back to 17 hours ago in the video. I believe it's 1 16th of an inch. Yes, it is 1 16th of an inch. These all need to pass through the wing so I can close this up. I'm gonna do that real quick. So yeah, so we've got playlists there to kind of help you um, self-soothe some of those random questions you might have and uh we always appreciate a nice um 
compliment here and there and constructive crit criticisms are never really a problem on the channel. But there are some people that think criticism is constructive. The criticism they come up with is like, you're a jerk, I hate your guts, and you suck at everything, and that's not, not constructive. constructive. So we usually just like immediately block those people and uh, say goodbye forever. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we don't really care what that person thinks. And then there's seven fake accounts that they get blocked. So it's super fun. It's also really super fun when you have like some random, like super personal attack that comes through. And then you're like, why did like seven people or 10 people say the same random thing totally unrelated to the video at mm -hmm. the same time? And you're like, hmm, ah, fake accounts. So when you get into YouTube, <laughs> yeah. And if you have kids and you let them have a YouTube channel, you should probably rethink that. Because it is a big world out there and there are a lot of jerks. Yeah. Even though we have a great audience, there's a lot of, you know, jerks. And I'm not even talking about prisoners. Prisoners are great. They're like our best audience. But yeah, if you have kids and you're going to let them be subjected to all the turmoil that comes up, you should probably seriously reconsider that. And that's not even talking about the mean kids. Yeah, oh, these kids, kids are, are watch your mouth, kid. Jeez. Like I would not be impressed if my children said some of the things that some of these children say. Like, really? But whatever. To all their own, just take care of them. See this? I just tightened that screw again. It was loose. And there's a washer there. So there's gonna be a washer on both sides. It's gonna sandwich. And then I'm gonna glue so that it can't back off. Because that perpetual motion back and forth will want to like loosen the nuts if you don't do something about it. Okay. So that 1 16th drill, uh, it looks like it's probably going to maybe go, oh, I don't know if it's going to go though. Might be a little bit too tight. It sounds like Bert and Ernie just then. For those of you that are similar to our age, you would know who Bert and Ernie are. They're yeah. still on. I know. Yeah, but. And we're before our time. Oh, no. Um, yeah, that's. I'm not going to go. I can't tell it. I don't want to break it, but I do want to try to get it to go because, yeah, that isn't going to go, unfortunately. I'm going to have to walk the drill bit a little bit. So, anyway, we got lots of cool things coming up in the near future here on Brian Phillips RC. In fact, we've got, I'm just gonna pull that. See how I'm pulling it to walk it? Cause I can't, you know, put the chuck any lower. In fact, I scratched it, that ticks me off. And let's see if that worked. So if you think about it, just go ahead and drill out that last hole. Feels like that's probably gonna do it. I'm gonna actually just take this easy connector right off of this rod. I thought that'd be helpful, so it'd be harder to drop in there. But I was incorrect in my assessment. So now I'm spinning it. I can't tell if they can see anything. Well, your fingers are in the way, but they can see in between. See? Oh, okay. So I'm gonna tighten this and then use the screw to actually continue onward. See? Oh yeah, that'll work. Cool. I love it when a plan comes together. Speaking of, I love it when a plan comes together. Did you hear about Bruce Willis? Because we're talking about celebrities all of a sudden. No. Yeah, evidently he has some condition oh, where he yeah. like can't remember um, lines and stuff. Like his his cognitive ability is declining badly, mm. which is too bad. I hate to hear about that, especially people that have had a cool career and lots of interesting movies. Mm -hmm. That that thing is. White. You White. see that? See that right there? See that right, Jer? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. like it's... That means I stretch it out a little bit, mm -hmm. which is probably not a great option. I don't think it will serve you well if you, if you do that. So be careful. Okay, so I'm going to glue this. And you're like, but Brian, like, doesn't that seem a little premature to be gluing that now? Mm -hmm. uh, to be perfectly frank, no. Because I feel like I'm going to forget that. And if I have to just unglue it later, not, not a big, huge deal. Just do a little bit of kicker to set that. 
Okay, so now I am going to come in here and go to the outside hole because that's what they suggested. And uh, it is gonna go, I believe it's gonna go. The hole is pretty tight, which is, you know, could be good. Well, I'm gonna go to the spot where there's no ribs on the teeth so I don't mar up the finish on this. Okay, cool, these are carbon fiber. The rest of those are just like wood, some sort of a like basswood or balsa, not, not balsa wood. Too light. You know, I need to back that off. Remember, these servos can be moved a little bit here and there um, at this point because we centered them electrically so the trim, the potentiometer inside will um, bring them to the correct home position. I don't know, Han. I'm thinking I want this to deploy more maybe. So what are you thinking? I'm thinking before we do that, I'm thinking this will also solve two, two problems because then we can cut that hopefully at some point. We're just going to go to the inside hole right okay. away. We can always take, we can always take and go to a new hole too if you really want to go aggressive. But I, I don't know if it's going to bind the, the mechanism there because it is pretty, you, you can only go so far, right? Right. But once you have that glued in, it's going to be really hard to I know. change well, the hole. Well, that, that's not true because you can undo this. Oh, no, that's even going to be kind of hard. No, you should. Eh, you're right. You won't easily be able to. Camera crew is always right. Mm -hmm. Just today. Okay, so, and again, kind of like what we did on the other half of the wing. We'll basically film this one, guys, and then we're going to... Um, we'll do the other half, you know, more or less off camera. So, well, depending on how the timing goes. Okay, a little kicker there just to set that up so it can be totally set up. I don't know if you're like maybe on the wrong side for some of this because you might be able to actually see from the other side, I wonder. I don't know, your hands are always in the way over here. Are my hands not in the way over there? Not really, because I can see like from the back. Huh. Not really. Kind of shadow everything over here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You seem to have a pretty good idea of what's going on. Gosh, it takes a long time when you have old when you have old glue. If you have new glue, that would have been set up like fifty-seven times. Mm. So if you guys are using, if you're buying this model, I mean, to be honest with you, if you have to buy a new tube of glue and it costs you like, say, fifteen dollars. Which, it's kind of expensive. It seems like a waste of money to buy a new glue. But what I've learned over the years is that these small tubes, um, if you just buy a small tube, then they actually do last for the majority of a model. And you use a lot less if it's not old. I just need to follow my own advice once. Okay, so you'll note that that's not probably where it's going to end up. It's probably going to be down here like that, okay? And you see how close that is to the... Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, while this is still kind of setting up... What did I do with that? Bed? There it is. While this is sort of setting up, what I want to do is I want to take and run the servo tester, which is down there, but then I don't... I'll scrap this. 1,300 million free us. Terribly special. And there. that one has all the extensions on it still. I'm going to grab a Gen 2 pack so we don't have... Any more leads? Any more leads? Where's the Gen 2 pack? There's no Gen 2 pack. What are you looking for? What size? I just need a Gen 2 pack. Any Gen 2 pack. Oh. Oh, here's one. Here's one. There's a 4S Gen 2. Woo! So what I'm going to do is I'm going to energize this and see if that wire needs to be cut before we get any further. Oh, okay. Because it's possible I might have just screwed myself on that. Hmm. Yep. I know, it's awkward, right in front of the camera and everything. Some of these things can be just more or less that way. Okay, so we need to go to the right here, this one. Doesn't matter which one, they're all gonna do the same thing. Okay. So now I'm gonna click, go down to servo test. Ooh, weird. 
cool. See how it's not tightened yet. I'm gonna go ahead and um, loosen this. Oh, we're in the max position now. Okay, so we'll do the max position. It does look like it lifted, which is good. Okay. So I'm just gonna step. Wait. I'm going really slow. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the slow movement on purpose because I want to make sure it's not going to bind. See what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Bound. And it's for a big part of the range, too. Oh, yeah. She's bound badly. Dang it. You see, guys? Look. We're bound right here. Oh, jeez. Okay. Okay, so here's another problem we're gonna run into. If it's bound, guess what's gonna happen? We won't be able to use that part of the range. Mm -hmm. But guess what else is tied to it? The leading edge slap. Mm. Hmm. So I may have to think on that one for a minute and decide, I can obviously undo this, that little glue will be no problem, and then go to the outside hole and see if we free the entire clearance. So let's try that next, which is just gonna take me a couple seconds to try. But since we're sort of in the middle of this, I wanna clean the tip, get that ready to rock. Then I'm gonna carefully take this, carefully take the screwdriver, I'm gonna carefully walk this off. Okay, so that's now free, okay? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. To the center. See that? Okay. To the other max extreme. Oh, that's annoying. See, if this was cut shorter, you could just take it right out. Mm. You see what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? So, trick of the day. I know that we aren't going to be down here keeping it, so I'm going to just bend this, okay? A little bit. You see how I bent it right there just a little bit? I want to see if that's enough. Still not quite enough. Because it'd be really nice if I could not have to take this out. You follow? Yeah, I do. Maybe I should go the other direction with it because I can, no, nah, because I won't have enough clearance there either. I'll just try bending it again a little bit more. You see what I did there? I just mm -hmm. bent it a little bit more yet. But then look, it's gonna get dangerously close to ripping into the finish. Yep. Hmm. Cause like this cutter, you're not gonna be able to get that in there mm -hmm. no matter what you do no. or try. So I'm trying to think if the only option is probably going to be, it's gonna be to go ahead and take that off. Except I can't spin that. Wow. So the only other option would be to take the servo tray off. You Wait, you can't spin? No, because this is going through it. I can't spin. Oh, yeah. You yeah, you're right. Out. Take the nut out. Yeah. Yeah. The screw is not what holds it on, by the way. What holds it on is the nut. Gosh. Sorry, guys. That was a very big gaffe on my brain. My brain's part. My brain apologizes. So the only reason we're going through this this time is because I want you to understand the rationale on how we decide some of these things in a hope that you might be able to get the help that you're looking for on your current build, which may or may not be this exact plane. This, of course, is the Stuka, right? No, this is a Storch. Or sorry, Storch, duh. Why is this Stuka? 
the Storch. And this is a 1600 millimeter by Dancing Wings. Beautiful plane. Okay, I'm gonna lay this over here so we can see it easily. Okay. Correct? Yes. All right, cool. So now I should be able to undo this. And nope, because we spun it in. Remember? Mm. I mean, we'll be able to get it. It's just gonna be awkward. I'm gonna go back to the middle. And then I'm gonna try to grab like this and push it out if it'll go. Come on now. Hmm. This is one of those things you run into once in a while and you just kind of figure out a way to get the thing apart. It is promising knowing that it won't be an issue coming apart. Because I don't think I'm gonna be able to hardly get it apart even with the tools. So it shouldn't come out on its own from vibration in flight. See, all I'm trying to do is just walk those threads through. Mm -hmm. Remember how I told you we wouldn't be able to get it through? Yeah. Hmm. There you go. I've got it backed off a little bit. Ow. Hmm. I mean, I could also heat that if I heated it. I could heat something, grab it, and then it would allow it to be softer, the plastic. But I'd rather just like pry it off if I can do that without damaging something worse. Mm -hmm. I cannot really guarantee a good angle there, camera crew, I'm sorry. Hmm. You're fine, you're fine. You can push like this, maybe? No? Because even if I take this off, I don't like taking these screws in and out a bunch of times. I'm gonna tell you why right now. These holes will not be threaded very long if you do that. Mm. But this will get it out. So, like I said, 14 steps of re revision work gets a little bit frustrating on a plane because there's a lot of steps left. And the reason I show you this is because I want you to see kind of, you know, how we ended up here. We could clip it out and then people would be like, well, oh, you should figure this out. I have one video in particular. Okay, see this? See, now that's out. Now I can just pull this all the way off. Okay. Now I can take this and just go ahead and cut this here. Okay. So now, worst case scenario, if I were to kind of slide that through like this, okay. now we can get it out all the way. Right. So now we learn the consequences of that last maneuver. Because I do not want to take that thing apart every time. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to walk this back to that position. I can go ahead and get the screws put back in. Now, since I pulled this out, unfortunately, I kind of need to glue so that the threads don't get stripped too bad. So I'm just doing like a little teeny bit. Again, we're not trying to glue this together. We're just trying to line the hole. And that way they'll hopefully be strong because we've gone in and out now twice and that's a pretty, pretty light duty um, pocket that's receiving that screw. Okay. So just a little teeny bit, just barely covering a couple of threads. Probably would have been easier to tighten the the nut on that with it off, but whatever. Mm. It's fine. We know for sure, we know for sure how much we cut off as well. So if we have to replicate that, we'll be able to easily do that, which is handy. Oh, by the way, we got lots of feedback on a helicopter video we released the other day that we had actually filmed 
um, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, on that 330S. And very appreciative of all of you that had left comments on how to uh, properly repair it with uh, feather uh, feathering rods. Feathering rods, I think is what it's called. Something like that. And that's uh, a function of safety and all that. So we appreciate you guys helping teach us what needs to be taught because the helicopters are definitely not my mainstay. I'm gonna go back to the middle. And then I've got this, this small washer and this small nut. And then there's even a little bit of glue left. So I'm gonna try to line that up so that the glue goes out. Was that in focus? Mm -hmm. Actually, this new camera, guys, we've got um, Galaxy S twenty one Ultra, yep. and we've been filming in four K or ten eighty P, depending on if we go back to the Samsung Galaxy S nine. Right? Is mm -hmm. that the, the alternate one? Yes. And the only reason we do that is because sometimes when we are under the impression that we can finish a video, we will go to great lengths to make sure we have enough memory or enough battery. But then sometimes we're just straight up wrong and we didn't have enough time to actually finish the video anyway. Okay, so just one more kind of drip of CA there. And then just a little drip of ticker. Okay. So now that that's glued, we can go ahead and set our positions. Okay, so put it all the way toward the flap. And tighten it. Now we've got. See? I'm gonna. Okay, go into the sweep. Ooh, that's not good. Still bound pretty early. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna see if there's another way to fix that bind, because that bind could be pretty bad, actually. So, my thought is to go to the max position and actually make the servo go up a little bit. And I wanna try something. Okay, so I have this set to a really small change. Okay. One microsecond or ultra second, I don't know. I think the default might be 20. Okay, so that sets the step size. Okay. Also, look at the milliamps. That means you're bound. See how it's got a number? That means it's drawing current when it's neutral. So that means you're either bound or pushing against something. Or it's an inrush current. Like right now, it's moving pretty fast, so. You can hear the servo. See, we're within like one click. Okay, so I'm actually quite fearful about the way this is gonna work out. So I don't know how it's gonna work out at this point. And the reason I'm fearful is because I know that these two channels are hypothetically going to be tied together. And I wanna make sure that we can get the full spectrum of play because the full spectrum of play is not that much to begin with anyway. And I wanna make sure that I can deploy the flaps appropriately once we're done 
with our build because there's been so much effort that's gone into setting up these cool flaps and I want to make sure they work well, but it does look really nice and I'm very happy with that. We also know how much we cut off now, as you can see there, so that we'll know how to replicate that. So what I need to do now is I need to glue in uh, probably the aileron, that's going to be, you know, like the next one. Um, we've already decided on how we can do holes, so I don't know, are we going to review all these steps, you think, or? I think we should just show the people one wing, and I'm going to show them another trick, okay? If you grab this, you see what I'm doing? These things move around pretty easy, okay? See how I'm rotating it with a needle nose? That'll clean out and remount that hole. You're like, goodness gracious, Brian, that's a lot of material you just took out. Yes, I agree. It pains me to do that, but you kind of have to do it. Okay. Now, the other thing is this has to be glued in, but we can't glue it in until such a time as we put this thing through. Now, I don't want to get in the same situation we had here. And I feel like we pretty much already have that going up as we do down. So it's possible that we pretty much just need to do the same exact thing. Just go with the outside hole and not try and... Oh, no, I'm Get for more. sure going to the outside hole on the ailerons. Okay. Because the nature of the aileron on this plane, it's so big. Mm hmm And, um, but I'm, I'm just curious if we're going to run into issues with, with fitment. Yeah. For clearance more than anything, really. Well, if we show them this whole wing, then yeah, we can... Yeah, then we can just do the whole other wing off yeah. camera. And then, like, maybe you can make dinner. What is dinner, anyway? Cajun shrimp and sausage. Get to help. It's my favorite dinner. Great. Except I'm <laughs> supposed to be building the other wing. Well, I'm going to like make it. I'm just going to start it. You better get the you better get the nets out so we can catch the, the shrimp. Yeah. Okay, so this is I how I can do that faster out. than you could build this plane. You need to go to the coast. Yes. Secure a pot. Yes. Get a fishing license. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. I actually kind of agree with you. <laughs> You could do that <laughs> legit quicker. Huh. Okay, I've got that in the grips. See this? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cut it just a little teeny bit less. Okay, for the aileron. Okay. So you cut off a little teeny bit less? Yeah, I okay. left a little more length. Okay. Because I felt like we were probably a little close. A, that's close. Yeah. Okay, now if you wanted to take that nasty edge off of there, see how there's a sharp edge? You could probably find a file if you were smart, or if you were really lazy, you could just do like what I just did. Or if you're in prison, we talked about that earlier. <laughs> and files. Or, or. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. Sort of worked. Stop, that's what? terrible. No, it's not. It's just, I'm taking down an edge on this. But yeah, this is the stone on the bottom and I don't think it's working very good, so I'm not gonna continue to do that. I was hoping I could find a material that would just act like, I'm just trying to knock off one little edge. Ooh, that's a pretty good spot there. Yeah, that's better, okay. <laughs> so, now I need to basically feed this this needs to go on to that. So guys, these builds, um, we hope that you enjoy watching them. I'm, I struggle, I struggle with the concept of how long these videos are because I know that some of you really, really enjoy and appreciate the longer format videos, but like on these videos in particular, you know, the ones that are like R for R plus or whatever, they just get to be so long that it's, yeah. I, this thing's going to take like a Is week to upload. Meant? I know. It's going to take forever. Oh, shoot. Look at that. What did you do? I heard it. Look at that. Oh, no. See, it split. Yep. Okay, well. Okay. Okay. I guess uh, you want to grab one of those over there, huh, next to the screwdriver. There's a bag. We're going to show the people the way to fix this problem. Oh, good. So if you split your hole because you stick your shaft in and it's just so huge. Oh, sorry, it wasn't so slow. If it's so huge that you rip your hole in half, 
then I will show you how to fix that right now. That's why it comes with extras. No, it's not why. Oh, listen, also I'm gonna put, I know I'm throwing caution to the wind here. I'm going to go ahead and put this extension cord, double, triple, quadruple check that your colors are right. And these are correct, okay? See, brown to black, so on and so forth. Cause then when we pull this up, it's gonna potentially. Oh, <sighs> so it doesn't pull back through. Yeah. And we also have to glue these when we put them back in. Right. Why does it sound like I'm playing with a drum? Oh wait. <laughs> so we're gonna pull these out, all four of them. And we can grab this and we can just real carefully guide that through. We're gonna be just real gentle when we do it so it doesn't cause problems. Now you can see that this screw is gonna have to get undone. And we're gonna make sure that we keep that nice and square and straight up and down, right? Mm -hmm. So you see it immediately moved. Mm -hmm. If you want that to stay where it is, the other trick of the day is this is what we're gonna do. Here, I'll lose that screw. Okay, just watch where it goes then. I'm watching. Okay, I'm gonna unplug my flat and I'm gonna plug in that servo and I'm gonna walk it to the middle actively. Okay, so it's now in the center. And where did the screw go? It's right here in front of you. Wow, that's like really small. That's what I said. Okay, so look, let's show the people what we're talking about. See that? I cut and then it opened up right there, which honestly, I don't know how you're supposed to totally avoid that. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Um, I'm gonna take and we'll use a different one, but we have to now verify the length. You have to make sure it's the same. And if it's not the same, then we have to switch on the other aileron, okay? So uh, that is the specifically the same length, okay? So it is the same length. So now I'm gonna show you why we're gonna do this different. We're gonna, first of all, we're gonna try it because if it breaks, we'll just, I'm gonna put this through and then I'm gonna pull down. See how there's a little bit of a bend on it and I'm gonna walk. Do you understand why I did that? Now the thickness is available up top. Okay, now because we had success with that, I'm gonna take and verify success with this, okay? Right. So I'm gonna basically take the assembly and build it. It's a little bit easier to build it out here actually. So this might not be a terrible concept. But you see, it's still not opened up enough. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put that into the hole. And you see how that blade's bending a little bit? Just gonna hold that, and you can even go here where there's no threading, and you can heat it up. And that's gonna open it a little bit, and it's also gonna melt that nylon, and it's hot. It's now cool. And I feel like that's probably okay, because now that it's nice and warm, it should be supple, it's not gonna break. And I felt like that went in pretty easy, okay? So just like that. And if this were to break, then I would not cut this end off. I would keep this end. But now that we know that end is likely to work, we're gonna get the nut and the washer on here. So it's just like that. Oops, excuse me, just like that. And we're gonna put this on. So I don't know if you guys are excited for Top Gun 2. I am. I've been waiting for it for like three years. <laughs> yeah. And it really ticks me off that they keep delaying the the movie. It's like if you just wait long enough, Cruz, then you can have another COVID thing to have to wait for. So anyway, I'm just concerned because they seem to keep waiting forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So that's got a little bit of friction on it, and I'm not real thrilled about it. Mm. But what else can you do? Back off the screw a little bit, I guess. I don't know. Well, no, I, the screw's already backed off a little bit. I mean, it's just going to have a little bit of friction. There's just not, no getting around it, because if I go any thinner, it's just going to break it right. again. Okay, so then the next step is we need to cut this here. So we can verify this is going to pass through. Oh, son of a biscuit. Did you do it backwards? No, I can't get it through the hole. 
the slot's too narrow. Oh, yeah, so the work I just did can't be done that way. Dang it. I'll tell you what, guys. These are the types of things that come up in these builds that just drive you nuts. Again, not the end of the world, but it's still pretty frustrating. There is another trick too, if you want to open that hole to the exact size, watch this. Take your drill bit out, open the chuck, drop your washer, then put this in your chuck. Just like that, don't do too tight or it'll break. Put it in the hole. See? Friction fit. Okay, so that's now opened up even more. Pop that out of your chuck. Put the drill bit back in. Then, we have to cut this. Do we know how side cutters are right now? I don't think we do. I don't think we've used them yet. Okay, so we'll just cut it like this. Cause that'll be fine. And these work nice as little shims. Yes, that's right, I'm keeping it. <sighs> so look, you can put those right back in there. It's a good thing we're not both hoarders. It would be a dangerous place to be. It would be. You wouldn't be able to walk very easy. Nope. Cut, and cut, and cut, and cut. See? It's like it never even happened. Yeah, except that it except did, and we filmed that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So remember, this needs to be straight up and down. So they're straight up and down, or at least as straight up and down as those splines will allow it to rest. And we're going to reverse engineer this quickly, get it put back together, throw the screw back in, okay. test the mo motion. Cool. Okay, to the center with you. And then really this is gonna ultimately be like this. So you remember way back at the beginning when we started this project, we were like, we need to define where these servos are going to be, what side they're gonna be and how they're gonna be mounted. So that was an exercise that seemed like an exercise in futility at the beginning. And you can see now why that was so not an exercise in futility, because you have to know what direction they're going. Mm -hmm. Because you can't just throw caution to the wind. It doesn't, it's not like you can just flip them. You can't get to this step and just guess. No, this all has to be thought out. And that's the, that's the hard part about these planes that are in an ARF plus or ARF configuration, almost ready to fly. This would be like an ARF plus, I would say, uh, is that you, you, you have to have a better idea of what you're doing, and I don't fancy myself some like master builder or anything. Um, I would say that I'm probably, you know, like an average assembler. And I try not to say builder because I'm not building this from scratch. Um, out of respect for people that have built them out of scratch, I don't mean to take anything away from what they've done. Don't misunderstand, but we are building it. You know, we're putting it together. We're assembling it. I say that in a generic sense. Okay. Again, we you know there's a lot of skill and art that went into building this before I even got it. And you can see how long I've spent, and all I'm doing is just putting the bits and pieces together, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so there's that. <clears throat> so now I can take this extension cord and just kind of pull that down and under. You can see why I was concerned about that wire, because look where it is. Mm -hmm. It's right under there. Okay, cool. So now the next step we have to do is because we've taken the screws out, we need to go ahead and actually get these 
with a drip of CA. And you're like, but Brian, why do you only do that after you've screwed it in the second time? Because the threads are already cut. And if they, if it was a virgin um, entry, then it probably wouldn't be as critical. Mm -hmm. So like the leading edge slat is not going to be as critical. So knowing what you know now, would you recommend that people assemble like the control rod and stuff before they put the servo into the pocket and screw it in? Or is this just, it is what it is? Uh, well, knowing this, that you have to open the hole up, I would at least for sure get that part done. Mm. That's probably the harder part. So yeah, that would be, that'd be probably a yeah. It's like all these steps are pretty manageable. Just, I mean, they definitely add up. Like, look how long we've spent just mounting three servos. We're an hour and 41 minutes. Is that it? So what are we up to, like 11 hours? No, I'm serious. Like on the whole video? No, I think we were at like seven and a half when we started tonight. So oh, so we're not doing as bad as I eight, thought. Eight, nine. Okay, well, that's seven. good. But we're kind of we're not done. We're not going to be done tonight. Well, no and we're also not showing both sides. Right. In in its entirety. Yeah. We don't mean to hide anything, guys. It's just a long process and we to be frank, we don't we don't have enough time to, to share that because I can build this stuff faster off camera. Like it probably took me a third as long to build that second side of the wing. Well, it also helps because you know yeah, what, you're, what you're doing. Yeah. We always show the first side so that you can hear the thought process behind it. And some of you would probably wish that we just did the second side so that we you didn't have to hear the thought process. You just saw what we came up with. But Brian's still going to explain it to you anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not necessarily true. On a build like this, I would probably just put it together. But the reality is we want to teach you guys how to do this. We don't just want to show you how to do it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to show you the end result. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of YouTubers that already do that, and... There's a time and place for that. But what we do here on Brian Phillips RC is the long format stuff because that's what we know that you guys really need. And we've had so many people that have asked us to keep doing it and we've just been, to be honest, a little bit reluctant at times to continue uh, doing the long format because uh, it is challenging. Long. But we also do it because people keep coming back. And so that's encouraging to us. If you really want to encourage us and you watch a long video, then how do I say this nicely? Don't tell me about how you bought it from your local hobby shop because then that's like oh. all the work that we put into it. It's just frustrating. Because that's the only way we make a quick buck. But we know some of you guys are overseas or whatever and it's right. just not practical. It's not always practical. So we're not trying to be, you know, completely unreasonable about that, but I'm like, hey, sorry it was out of stock, so I, I bought it at the local hobby shop. Well, thanks. We do hear that quite a bit, actually, so kind of get it, though. Okay, so check this out. So that's torqued down. Okay. All right, so now I should be able to do a sweep. Oh boy. That's 102 milliamps, so it is bound. That's 34 milliamps, so it's just barely bound. Okay, so, th but this we can adjust. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's sitting here, here, and here. Okay, well that's perfect. So, I mean, honestly, it's, I mean, it's, it's imperfect, but I'm fine with it because that we can adjust pretty easy. We can adjust the throws down just a hair so that they don't actually hit. That'll be done in radio setup. So if you're curious how to do that, we will go over it in radio setup portion of this video. So real quick, just because I want to see it happen, I am now going to energize the right flap and the aileron. It's going to be cool. Now, these are not going to be controlled the same way.
That's so cool. Can't wait to see the next step. Okay, so the next step, of course, is gonna to be to do the leading edge slats, which I need to drill the hole. I need to glue this thing. This thing could probably be glued right now. And the way that you glue it is, you're supposed to glue it pointed forward. You see, it's shaped like this. Mm -hmm. And that's supposed to go in there like that. Okay, now there's quite a bit of extra material on there. So I'm gonna take and just rub this off. <laughs> Oops, see all that nastiness is coming off of there? It's a carbon fiber residue, whatever. So that's definitely supposed to go forward according to the drawing. Do you not? And then you'll put the control horn in before you put the mm -hmm. thing through. Let's try it now. So that's gonna go in there, cool. And then this is gonna need to be, that might need to be longer than the other two, looks like. Oh. But we have to drill our hole before we can get that far ahead. So I'm gonna take our pliers again. Just be super careful. If you drop this on here, you might break. You might break things. So I'm gonna take and support this so that I can kind of twist it. Pushing down, rocking. Please don't break real bit. Okay. Let's hope that was enough. So let me take this little easy mechanism. Oh, there's a nut off of it, Megan. Oh no. Uh, hopefully that nut's in the sack somewhere. Otherwise that's gonna be a big bummer. Yeah, here, let me see that. I didn't see one. Unless I drop one. Oh crap. Those ones don't have, oh, there's only one nut. I don't know what I was thinking. There is only one nut, it's two washers. Sorry guys, there's only one nut. So it's okay? Yes, okay. it's fine. My apologies. Brain fart from a long day and a long week and a really long month so far this month. And a kind of long year. This year? Kind of. 2022? Has it been, has it been bad? I don't think it's really been bad. We've had a pretty good year. We just had a lot of challenges that came up this year that were unexpected. Some okay, different... is, is that on the right side? Yeah, it's on the right side. It's on the right side. This one's on a different side. This is gonna be on the right side. Okay. Correct? I mean, it's definitely not going over here. No, that's true. Okay. Um, yeah, this year's been full of challenges, off-camera challenges, and uh, a few on-camera challenges. But really, at the end of the day, I, I feel like the year has been a good good year. It's like, for me, it's a good year if we're growing and having some level of success on a variety of different fronts. And we've had that this year. Yeah. We've also true. had a few that were not so successful that if they were successful, would have projected us into um, a different spot, which would have been nice, but sometimes those things just don't work out and you just gotta learn that there's sometimes a reason and you don't always know what that is right away. Mm -hmm. And that's the hardest part for Megan and I because we're both pretty driven. I'm um, on a different level than her in that regard she drives her nuts i'm driven nuts you're just driven driven she's I'm driven, driven nuts. nuts yeah so many nuts in this video guys well. okay so i'm just going to torque this down somewhat so that i can get the threads exposed so i can put some glue on it okay so then this one here, my concern is I don't know if I can shorten it or not because mm, I don't know right. the neutral state of a leading edge slap. Mm. Gotta back that off just a little bit further, just like that. And then this is not glued at all. And that's the way it's gonna be until we are done running it in and out. Okay, so that's stuck down. Unfortunately on this, I don't, 
I don't know the exact position, and I'm a little bit concerned that we're going to end up needing to use that eight channel receiver just because we won't be able to tie these together. Mm. Because we're going to have to set end. Otherwise, you're going to lose too much of your range potentially. Yeah, or, you know, we'll have to give up range on both sides. And yeah. as a result, then we do have to give up more than we would otherwise have to give up, which is not ideal. I think we're just going to have to glue that. There's no getting around it. Okay, so I'm going to pull that out of the hole. Go pretty heavy on the glue. Stick it in the hole. Go pretty heavy on the glue again. That's a long lever, so it's going to want to break out. Pretty heavy on the glue on that side. Just kind of put it roughly centered. Now this time I do want to get a little bit of kicker on there. Definitely. De definitely. Okay, we're going to let that set for just a quick second. And then the good news is I believe I can run that servo back. Okay, so we're gonna unplug the other two surfaces, which are currently centered, which is good. Ish. Okay, so there, oh, dang, that's a Y splitter. Where's the other servo? Oh, it's unplugged already. This is the right leading edge slats. You can just plug in wherever to the servo tester. That glue is not set up yet, goodness gracious. Get on with it, buddy. So if you guys aren't actively in this hobby because you're waiting, you know, to have more money or to have more time or to have more skill or whatever it is that you're waiting for, stop waiting. I want a prison sentence. Yeah, if, well, I mean, the prison yard. I mean, shoot, you think they'd let them fly in the prison yard? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Prison's kind of like one of those punitive places. It's true. They were just trying to punish us poor people that they broke more TV laws, channels than we do. Probably hurt other people, things like that. I don't know. Depends. Maybe that's part of the prison sentence. They don't get, like, they just get basic cable now. Oh. Um. Maybe that's the way it is. Okay, so, oh boy. Okay, so that's all the way down. So that would need to be, like that's as far as I can go in the downward position. Again, admittedly, guys, I haven't set up leading edge slats for so long. Like, I honestly am not 100% sure how this is going to work. Okay, we're out of throw. Ooh, see how that's running into the wing? Mm hmm. See, and that's what kills me because when, if you did it the other way, it would hit it earlier. But I almost wonder if we need to relieve that frame a little bit. Like, do we need to cut this right there so it's got a relief so it can actually actuate? Mm. That is a tough call. I am not sure. I'm gonna go in with the flaps too on the other half of this Y cable. Well, that's just any of these plugs. See? That is so cool. Show them from the end. Right there. Okay, you ready? Mm hmm That is so cool. There is going to be some finagling like we've never seen on this plane. I mean, it's going to be a lot of finagling in the radio setup. Oh, man. But I'm super excited to see it. <clears throat> I'm just not sure exactly all the steps going to be involved. Okay, so kind of in closing, more or less, because this wing is done for all intents and purposes. Right. It's, it's totally done, right? 
Everything is glued together, everything is secured. Um, <clears throat> for lack of better terms, it's done. Okay? Wait, are you, well, I mean, you keep doing that, but you were talking about gluing in that piece that pins in where it folds, or are you not gonna glue that? If you're talking about being like done, done with the wing. You're talking about that? Yeah. Um, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but the sentiment would be right at the moment, you're talking about this. Yeah. Are you gonna glue that? Or do you glue it? Well, to be honest with you, the problem is if the wing is allowed to come off like this, between this and that, that could be potentially devastating to the airplane's performance. But you're going to have the bracing on there. You're actually... Isn't that going to keep that from folding anyway? No, the bracing has a pin. But you're right. It will not be allowed to pull out. Right. What? Oh, no. You'll take that off, slide it through the wing, then you'll be allowed to fold. I am going to opt for not gluing it. Okay. I know it sounds kind of crazy. But we are going to glue that. Hey, camera crew, would you grab that black thing? And we'll go ahead and put that on this wing. Because there is a black thing. This antenna thing. Yeah. Oh, that's an antenna. That's right. Okay, so yes. we're going to glue this antenna in. Oh, what the frick? Look at that. Is that going all the way? If not, we'll have to. Oh, yeah. It's Sharpie it. Okay. It's got deep penetration. Oh, good. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. That's like Is it supposed to go way in, there. way in there like that? Is that how far it's supposed to go? Hmm? It says stick. Install scale antennas in the wing stick, reserve hole. Stick termy? Stick, stick firmly. firmly. Oh, wow. Firmly. Firmly. Okay. Sometimes the Chinese are not articulate enough for what we need to understand but they speak a lot more English than I speak Chinese. All right, so let's try this, just ram and stick it firmly. Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to, how deep do I stick it? I don't know. I wish, I wish I knew if that was correct. Can't see it on the picture. Is there any other pictures? Mm -hmm. Hey, this I need to do kind of quick because I got CA on it. Gosh, I can't, I can't tell. Oh, it looks like it's pointed out straight. Like that or something. I don't know. Crap, we might have to like look it up real quick while that glue is still setting up. Do we need to? Do I need to pause? No, it's supposed to be down a little bit. It's supposed to be down a little bit like this. Let's just do that. That's good enough. Okay. I'm satisfied with that. Just getting the CA to wrap around the corner there. This is gonna be good. It's gonna be cool. Mm-hmm. And this plane is going to be a great flying plane, I bet. <clears throat> we could just shave like 90% of the build time off. It'd <laughs> be great. It'd be great. Like if there's about four set screws, which is kind of like honestly about, about our taste right now. Yep. But then, I don't know, there's just certain things that they don't do great at the factory. The factories in China and so like if you can put your TLC into it then you can really kind of give it your special touch but to be honest I, I'm okay with them touching it that looks so good I'm so excited to see this thing fly it's gonna be a good flying plane and that's why we put up with a long build because it is in fact going to be a good flying plane Okay guys, so there you have it. There's the, the wing. That looks absolutely fabulous. Fabulous. And I cannot wait to see it fly. Guys, 
We are going to build the other one off camera. Stay tuned. So much more to come. If you want to help support the channel, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, obviously click the bell for notifications. And if you want to buy this beautiful plant for your very own, you can see it in the link in the video description below. If you can't or don't want to buy this particular plane, there's lots of other planes and also brianphillipsrc.com. And you can see a full exhaustive list of all of our planes. And we'll also have links to playlists so that you can quickly access videos as well as buy from the links in those descriptions, which are identical to what you're seeing in this particular video. Mm -hmm. The only difference is you can see all of them at once. And like, for instance, if you're watching this video and you say, hey, what about that plane behind you or that plane or this plane or this helicopter, that helicopter or whatever, you can see it on Brian Phillips RC and you can buy it from there or you can just go to the link at the YouTube channel and you have a playlist and you can find exactly what you want to see about that particular plane. So we're trying to kind of make this full circle so you can navigate back and forth and get to where you need to get because we know you guys obviously have things to do since you're watching a 12 or 13 hour long build video. But anyway, we appreciate you staying tuned. So much more to come. YouTube, Brad Phillips. Okay, so first things first, I realized that our mic receiver was not turned on. We had mics on earlier for like the majority of the last hour, hour and a half. Two. Two. So sorry about that. It sounded like it was going to be okay on the footage, but a little bit more echoey. So our apologies. Um, okay, two big updates. We have everything done on both wings, ready with the exception of pulling these labels off, which we could hypothetically do now, which would be kind of cool, except it's kind of nice to see what they are. So let's just go ahead and leave them on for now. And I wanted to show you two things. I cut little pockets here one of which was more deeper and uglier, and one was less necessary. The reason that was necessary, this is the off-camera wing. We did the right wing on the camera, the left wing we did off-camera, and I had to pick a spot for that because the factory positions were not up appropriate given our scenario. I want to use one channel for flaps and leading edge slats if possible. I will show you. I have this working. All of it is hooked up now. Okay, so there's a sweep. Couple things to keep in mind. Ailerons are opposite as expected. That's normal. And look at the leading edge slats are going in the same direction and the flaps are going in the same direction. I had to tear this flap out altogether and increase the gap. You'll note there's a little bit of a differential now. Here, as compared to here, there's not, okay? So I don't know if that means I'm gonna end up tearing this out. I don't think so because we have about the same amount of deflection on the ailerons as noted by this bite point here. And that bite point, watch when it comes around. See, it's not quite biting, but it is biting. That can be adjusted with this screw, okay? Just loosen this screw, slide it back slightly. And that's something that we're gonna mess with once we have the separate independent controls. I just wanted to show you it working. So now just to simplify the look and feel of this whole operation, I'm gonna unplug the servos for the ailerons. Well, actually, how about we do this? Let's lay down and let's do this. To the middle. Unplug the ailerons and they will be neutral then, okay? So now we'll go back to sweep. Okay, so the sweep is really cool. And I just have these two wing joiners here. Now you can really get an idea when you look down the length of that wing, the leading edge slats are really close. Mm -hmm. Now they were not really close at the beginning. That took a lot of fiddling. Same thing here, remember I had to rip off this one. You'll note they go past center. See, so watch this go over the top, over the top now. But we may want that for some reason, like storage when you fold the wing back. It might be just enough to pass over the fuse, okay? So very, very happy with the way that turned out. I know it's not perfect yet, but honestly, it's close enough to where it's gonna actually work. 
And you can also watch the loading on this IC, this XBC 100. See how it says 170, 172, 102, 136, 102. There, we have a little bit of bind. It goes to about 300 milliamp hours. Or milliamps, not milliamp hours. Boom. And what's happening is that means that it's somewhere through this sweep, there's a spot where it's bound real briefly, probably at the end of stroke. And I think what's going on is the reason that this, this might be binding there just a hair. Oh, it's so close. But then this end down here, you see this gap is bigger. So probably what I'm gonna have to do is I'll have to take and then center this and push that in a little bit more yet. In fact, I might be able to snap that back right now to the center and see if it'll go. Yep, it is still gonna go, sweet. Because my glue's not set up yet because mm -hmm. I had to use the thin CA. But just note this here, when this goes, now we have our gaps even. That's really cool. So when that sets up, it's gonna be perfect. So really, really happy. I think this looks so cool. Mm -hmm. I think it looks cool from the top and the bottom. Also, one other weird thing I had to do was this thing. Um, we decided that we're not gonna glue those in at all because we're gonna have strut mounts that hold this so they can't slide out. So one was thinner than the other. So this one was tight. It was real loose actually. And so what I did is I just built up a bunch of CA on there and then smoothed it all off. And now it's got a bite. I'm probably gonna have to do the same thing on this side. And all that's doing is just kind of guaranteeing that it's not gonna pop out on, on its own because we are gonna have some wing struts that come back to a singular point. And that, again, will prevent this from sliding off of the fuse. So very happy with that, very cool. Super excited to see this all come together. And as you can see, we have good alignment here. We have good alignment here. These are in almost exactly the same position neutrally. Okay, and then that would actually be at the middle of the stroke. That's at the very end of the stroke and it's not bound. Super bad, it's 306 milliamps. So that means if I go one click, it goes to 68 milliamps. So that means bound a little teeny bit, not bound. Not bound at all, okay? Then at the other extremity, there's that. So that's where your extra channel comes in really handy. If you decide to separate the flaps from leading edge slats, you could actually completely eliminate this strange configuration here. Okay, these are unhooked right now. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys all watching at home, but I just think that it's the coolest thing ever. And uh, even if I have a bit of a spoiler on going on here, that might be kind of a cool configuration. Like that'd be a high speed. So if the throttle is, you know, all the way up, maybe then it goes to this setting. But I don't want it to go to that setting if I have flaps on. If the flaps are not deployed, then it'll go from, you know, wherever the neutral setting is up to this. So that would actually increase the overall speed and aerodynamic nature of the wing because this leading edge gets clean and then this trailing edge uh, actually lifts up a little bit, which would increase your speed slightly. But anyway, I just think it's cool. I think it's really, really cool, especially for a balsa wood plane. So really happy with the way this came together. Really disappointed that it was so much work because it was a ton of work. And off camera... You were about almost two and a half hours two off camera. Two and a half hours of just dinking around. Yep. Now, I didn't need to do as much carving here, and that's a disappointment. I got this side real nice and clean, but the thing is, to be perfectly frank, if I would have just pulled these things forward a little bit more extreme, I could have avoided it all together. What I would have rather done is, I didn't shorten this linkage, okay? And if I did, I don't want to shorten it. And I would have suggested that you take and cut a groove into this and then allow this thing to push forward a little bit more. That would get you clearance and do it exactly the same on both sides. But keep in mind, there are so many different parts that you have to glue in and you have no real jigging to guarantee that you got it in the right spot. So I'm hoping that my gap here is identical or very close to identical to the gap over here. That was very difficult to, to verify. So when we built this, 
Fortunately, we had the idea to put the leaning edge slat on and then glue everything in. That helped a lot, but it's still not perfect, okay? And you guys will find out what I'm talking about when you go to build this really complicated wing. Again, the Chinese people at the factories do a really nice job of assembling these planes when they're binding fly planes. This type of situation is complicated enough that I feel like only a you know strong intermediate to, to more advanced um, RC enthusiast is gonna be able to get this wing right. So if you're new, don't get this plane. No. Okay, there's just too many factors that you're not gonna be able to get right, and I'm barely able to get it right. I felt like I lucked out on some of these details. So that being understood, if you're just building it to look cool, then no big deal. Or if you're just fixing the slats, or if you're gonna have like channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, channel six, channel seven, channel eight, channel nine for throttle, channel 10 for AS3X on off, channel 11 for master gain, channel 12 for something else, you know. I mean, that's when you can really start to actually have independent control. Mm -hmm. And the AS3X and SAFE and all that stuff will work together. That's where you can get away with some in disparity here. But I'm telling you, your geometry will be different from the left to the right side. And if you deploy all four tight on one channel and one's up four or five or 10 degrees or 15 degrees different offset, you're going to roll or you're going to roll. And if your flaps are then in the other direction, then your plane is going to yaw and dip. It's going to look stupid. So you have to get this stuff right because aerodynamic effect is a little bit critical on these airplanes, as you can imagine. So probably preaching the choir on that, I realized, but at the end of the day, this plane is looking very good. Very excited to see it all together. I've got two servos to put in next, um, ESC, nose, all this stuff to build. I thought we were gonna be done, it's almost midnight, fun. So I have to make dinner, evidently I'm responsible for that. So we were talking about different channel setups and I'm still leaning toward the AR631, but if that doesn't happen, I can do this and get full pack telemetry voltage back to my smart transmitter, in this case, the NX8. And I can do that with uh, smart batteries or non-smart batteries, given that this has the battery lead that will give us telemetry voltage. So it is very tempting to have that, but at the same time, when you fly a plane like this, it's not like you're running an EDF at 200 miles an hour with your hair on fire. It's just, it's, it's gonna be a different experience. This is a stole airplane. So my expectation is gonna be that we're gonna get a long flight time from a battery. We're not gonna really need the pack voltage that much because it's only gonna be for the first couple of flights. And then you'll know and you can kind of just work with it. So right now, I'm just sort of not 100% sure if I can overcome my issue with the flaps because I don't want to give up throw on the leading edge slats necessarily for the flaps, okay? That's where this might give you the advantage over this. And to be perfectly frank, the 631 is quite a bit cheaper than the AR637T, but the 637T and the, the ar 8360T are only like 15 bucks difference. So if you're spending the kind of cash you are on an AR637T, you might as well just buy this for this application. That immediately alleviates several of your concerns. But given that this is significantly less and it's still fairly expensive, I would suggest that this may be good enough. We're gonna start here. If it doesn't work, we'll package it back up and put this in instead, okay? Or I don't know. I haven't fully decided. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. So, typical bright folks waffle. <laughs> but anyway, these waffles are delicious. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. There is still so much more to come. I know it seems like it's been a week uh, because it has been a week. <laughs> no, not quite. It'll not be quite. A week in two days. Yeah. Because we started this on a Saturday, right? Started on Saturday. Oh, on a Saturday. Okay. So we got a couple of minutes before it's been a full week. <laughs> That's crazy. But at the same time, this plane is worth it. It's just like the, the PT-17. The difference is, I can say this, the PT-17 is freaking huge. Yeah. 
It is big and you cannot take that wing apart because once you put all those, you lash all those things through there, it's like, it's gonna take you about probably three hours to take all those things off. Yeah. And all the turnbuckles have to be retorqued and it's just like, no, you're never gonna take that thing apart unless it's to take it apart to move to you know a, another country or something. But this plane, you'll be able to legitimately take this rod from inside the plane, slide it through like this, okay? And this is, this is no joke, this is exactly how this is gonna work. So hopefully it works. Okay, so you're gonna pull, 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 and then eventually, well, you won't necessarily have to drop it down like that. So I don't know if we're gonna paint them or what, so we know when it's out, but then you'll be able to legitimately do that, which is freaking cool. Except it has the things on it. The things on the bottom? Yeah. The things on the bottom pivot. Oh. Along with the wing. But that yeah. will prevent, okay. that will prevent this from pulling out. Right. And if it becomes a problem, we'll just glue that shaft in here. Yeah. Okay, then when you're ready to fly, you get out to, and, and okay, so suppose you did what I just showed, okay? So suppose you just did what I showed, right? Which, I'm sorry, I gotta adjust this in a little bit. That CA joint is, I need that actually to not be a problem. This is gonna, okay, let's just pretend what it would be like if it was. This is gonna push all the way in potentially to the wing, or yeah, it's gonna have to push all the way into the wing. But you see what I just did? You're gonna to wanna to be careful about that because that's gonna be real bear cat to get out of there once you have this assembled in the plane, okay? See how I did that? I just stuck a screwdriver in there, wedged it and pulled. So guys, that's all you get for tonight. It's always a privilege and honor to have you guys following us. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, click the bell for notifications. We have Patreon and PayPal down below. We also have Brian Phillips RC, so just www.brianphillipsrc.com. And that's our, gonna be our website where you can find links to all this stuff. And then of course, links back to the playlist. Some of our more advanced uh, planes that we did lots of time on, we may actually have like a more laid out nice thing like the Airbus A380, for instance. Yeah, Megan and I will work on something for that. But it is a work in progress, so please be nice. If you see links that are broken, it is helpful for us to know that. So please let us know in the comments below. And then also we're gonna have links on most of our videos still because it takes us a long time to go through 1500 plus videos and update all of those things. So if you have questions, leave them in the comments. That will get to our attention um, pretty quick. And uh, that's all we got for you. Stay tuned. This build's not done, obviously. More coming.